Well, good afternoon. Welcome to WAG's Facebook event. Today we'll be, we will be discussing Universal Credit Managed Migration. We have Lee who will be joining us from the Money Advice team and Sylvia who's a customer but also one of our colleagues. Sylvia, can you share with us how you first heard about Universal Credit and your experience? Yes, yeah, sure. I received a letter through the post. Um, I was already in receipt of child tax credit, okay. so they invited me to migrate over onto universal credit. Um, my experience at first, I thought it was daunting because I suppose you're just used to being on one benefit and then yeah. just transferring onto the other. So it was quite daunting filling in the forms. Um, but then eventually I knew I was on the right track once I started to see all the responses from universal credit coming back mm -hmm. into my inbox. Um, but at the same time, it was, I just really didn't know when to make the claim. So then that's when I got in contact with Money Advice. And then Lee, he gave me some good <laughs> advice of when to put my claim in. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, just so, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I didn't want to be, I suppose it's different for some people. Some people receive their benefits monthly. And then for mm -hmm. me, it was I receiving the child tax credits weekly. Yeah. So it, it was kind of daunting to think, oh, I've got to manage five weeks without it. But then what I did do to kind of prepare myself before the deadline was I saved a little. Okay, brilliant. So I saved a little, and which in, that was helpful. Yeah. But then just going through the process of when you go for your ID, mm -hmm. that was just quite straightforward as long as I brought all my... Um, all the proof that they wanted, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Okay, just gathering all the evidence yeah. that you need. Yeah, definitely. Day. Yeah, because otherwise it, it hinders the process, doesn't it? Okay, yeah. And because yeah. you want your claim sorted, um, then, yeah, yeah, so, you know, that's smooth. So you, you just want it done. So you make sure that you bring all the, the evidence that's required, and, and that's what I did. Brilliant. Yeah, but the, only thing, the other thing that I must say, to be honest, is just like, when you are filling in the forms, it does ask you for your tenancy start date. Okay. So it might be best that you complete it mm -hmm. and then go back in and do a change of circumstance and put in your most recent rent increase or your rent charges. Okay. So, and that's, how, that's what my experience was. Brilliant, thank yeah. you for sharing that with us today. And Lee, um, can you explain what universal credit mi manage migration is? Yes, well that's basically when that's a timetabled move uh, for people on the existing old style legacy benefits where they're given a set timetable to move over to universal credit and those benefits are tax credits, mm -hmm. housing benefit, income support, income based JSA and income related ASA. Okay, brilliant, thank <coughs> you. And Lee, how does it all work? Well, it's three stages. The first stage, I think Sylvia's already done a pretty good job of covering, <laughs> which is the, the managed migration letter. Uh, that letter's sent out, notifying somebody that they've got a change. Yeah. Uh, you've usually yeah. got three months, which I think was the case for you, yeah, wasn't it, it Sylvia? Was, yeah. So you've got three months to do it from when the letter's issued. The next stage is to make the claim itself, mm -hmm. which is usually done online, okay. uh, but there is an option to do it by telephone if, for whatever reason, you can't do it online. And the final stage is the calculation. So that's where they actually calculate your entitlement, tell you what you're going to get paid. Brilliant. So the telephone claims would be for any vulnerable clients that we might, yes, customers that we might have. I, as well. I, I would generally recommend if people can do it online, it's better to do it online. Yeah. But that doesn't suit everybody. That's not no. suitable for everyone. So the option is there to do the claim by telephone if you can't do it online. Brilliant. Thank you for sharing that today, Lee. Um, and Lee, what do people sort of need to know in terms of when and how to claim any waiting periods? There's, there's a few things you need to know. And again, as, as Sylvia has already pointed out, there is a five-week wait from when yeah. you claim to when you get your first payment. So that's something you need to bear in mind. Mm -hmm. You may want to prepare for it, such as how Sylvia did. You can get an advance off them if you're not going to be able to last the five weeks, but you will have to repay that for you, through your, your future okay. payments. Yeah. The other thing to consider is the day that you make the claim determines what day you're going to get paid on. Right, so you've okay. actually got a bit of a bit of choice there. You've got a little bit of control. Uh, so mm -hmm. you might decide 
to make the claim so that you get paid your universal credit the same day as your wages. You might decide you want to get paid your universal credit in the middle of the month. Okay. Or, for example, if you were getting tax credits and they were paid every four weeks, you might decide to make your claim the day after your tax credit payment, so you've at least got four weeks' worth of tax credits right. to get you through the five-week wait till your first payment. So there's, there's lots of things like that. Yeah, uh, to, to be aware of. To be aware of, yeah. Lovely. Thank you for explaining that, Lee. Um, Sylvia, I mean... Is there any tips that you can share with our customers today? Yeah, there's quite a few. I think the first one I'll start off with is if you can or you're in a position to save, just yeah. save a little bit because it does help. Mm -hmm. um, and I know everyone's not in that position too. Mm -hmm. um, just make sure you've got all your evidence from your tenancy agreement, everything that's required for your claim to be processed quickly. And also, I think once it's all over, um, just to be aware that, like what Lee mentioned before, some people make a telephone claim mm -hmm. and some people it's online. Yeah. Um, but your journal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You need to check your journal. Yeah. yeah. And I think some people tend to, um, it's easy to forget about it because, you know, your mind just tells you, okay, my income or my benefits come in on this day, and mm -hmm. you don't check exactly what's going on. But it, it's good to get in the habit of checking, going into your yeah. journal each month. Mm -hmm. And that does avoid you from being sanctioned as well. Yeah. Because sometimes there's <coughs> messages there for you. So, um, like any notifications that come yeah. through, especially at the start, would yeah. you say, when you first make the claim? Yeah, because it also tells you about your, your housing costs right. as well. Okay. So that's important because um, you need to know if the payment's gone to you. Of or course. has it gone to your landlord? And yeah. then you can act on it. Do you know what I mean? So if you are if you become in the habit of checking it, then it's very good because then you can address when things go wrong very quickly. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. sharing yeah, I, that. I would second that in particular mm -hmm. about looking at the journal. I've, I've come across quite a few people who've had the claims closed because yeah. they didn't spot something on the journal. In theory, you should always get a text or an email telling yeah. you there's something there, but right, I wouldn't okay. I wouldn't trust that 100%. I would still advise that you check it periodically, particularly when you first claim, because you'll get loads of messages in the first week or so. Okay. You, you yeah. do need to check it frequently. Yeah. So is it better having an online claim then? If you're able the to. If yeah. you're able to. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't yeah. suit everyone, does it? It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. Thank you guys for sharing that with us today. Um, and also, Lee, um, another question for you. Um, how can WHG Money Advice support our customers? Well, we can costs? explain what's involved in the process. So we can explain yeah. to people how it'll work. We can work out what their potential entitlement to universal credit is. Okay. Uh, if they need any assistance in the actual claim process, uh, we can give that. We can also check the award as well mm -hmm. when it's made because some people, if they're going to be worse off on universal credit, are entitled to transitional protection. Right. And sometimes things like that can get missed. So when the award has been made, we can check it okay. to see if it's accurate. And if it's not, support people with challenging that. Oh, brilliant. That's good to know. I'm sure it'll help a lot of our customers who go through the process. Um, thank you for both joining us today. Okay. Um, and I hope everyone found it useful. And please uh, get in touch with the Money Advice team if you need any support from us. Yeah, and I'll just add as, add as well that if you want to speak to Money Advice, you can contact us through the website. Yeah. You can call the main switchboard number or you can pop into the office, whichever one suits. Yeah. Thank you.